Okay, I am John Beckman, Professor John Beckman, Dr. John Beckman, and today we're going to talk about SIP. This is calf intestinal alkaline phosphatase. So I had just in the lab just had a great ex, uh, example to show of when and why you would want to use calf intestinal alkaline phosphatase. So what is SIP? Let's just look at the Wikipedia quip. Uh, quick, it's an alkaline phosphatase that catalyzes the removal of phosphate groups from the five prime end of DNA strands. So if you have a DNA strand, double stranded, uh, five prime, three prime, five prime, three prime, and you add SIP in there, it's going to remove that phosphate off the five prime and it's going to cut that off. So why would you do this? Well, let me give you a perfect example that demonstrates why you would use this. This is a tool in molecular cloning, and you often need this when you're doing subcloning. I don't use it every time, but there's cases in which it can drastically enhance the efficiency of your subcloning reactions. So let's look at this data. Let me zoom in here. So here's a subcloning reaction. Now, what I was trying to do is, this is my insert, this top band. Okay, there's six rows of it where I did a digest, a double restriction enzyme digest. So I'm cutting out a insert that I want to subclone into a different plasmid, okay? Uh, and the top band is my insert and the bottom band is the plasmid that it was in, okay? That I'm trying to get it out of and put it in a different plasmid. So one of the problems that I was encountering is the insert is actually very close in size to the actual plasmid. So the insert is about 3,200 base pairs and the plasmid is actually 2,700 base pairs. So they're pretty close in size. So one of the problems is when you do a restriction digest and you run this out on a gel, you see these streaking patterns. Um, it's very, very difficult to actually get a very, very clean separation of the insert from the actual plasma. So if you're just going to do a standard restriction digest, cut out the gel band and then do a ligation, you have problems because in this top band, if you cut this out, it's inevitable that there's going to be some contamination with this bottom band fragment. Okay, so what's going to happen is then if you run out the gel and the two bands are close together, okay, and you cut out this top band, you're going to have a mixture of mostly insert, but you're going to have some cut plasmid in that in that tube that came from that uh, that that site. So one of the problems is you get you get re annealing here. Okay, so if you were to do a ligation reaction where you were then going to mix what you thought was just this insert into a new plasmid, into a new plasmid, and you do that ligation reaction, what's going to actually happen is you're going to get a bunch of these plasmids that just re anneal to themselves. They re ligate, and you basically end up with a bunch of plasmids that were your old construct and you didn't successfully transform or ligate into the new construct, okay? So that's one of the problems that you get when you have bands that are very, very close together. So one of the tricks that you do in molecular biology is instead of doing just restriction digest, if you do your restriction enzyme digest with your enzymes, but you also add one microliter of the calf intestinal alkaline phosphatase, that phosphatase is going to remove the phosphate uh, pieces from that plasmid that you don't want it to re-anneal back into. It's going to basically eliminate the ability to ligate back into that. Then when you add your other plasmid, so you have your other plasmid, which is your destination, your destination plasmid, which you also restriction enzyme digested. Now the key here is when you do this restriction digest, you don't add SIP, no SIP, okay? And then that means that only this plasmid, where you want it to go, has those phosphate groups so that ligation reaction can seal the phosphate backbone and it can work. So this is what you then mix in with your little fragment, and then you get a nice ligation of that phosphate backbone with just the plasmid, the destination plasmid, being successful and you're basically eliminating the possibility of re-annealing back into that old plasmid, okay? So just in brief summary, um, this is a problem you often encounter in subcloning when bands are close together and you can't possibly get 
all of the contaminating old plasmid backbone out of that. So you just add SIP to that reaction. That SIP prevents this plasmid backbone from reannealing with the insert. And then when you do the ligation, here's the results that I got. So here's one reaction where I used the SIP technique and the no SIP technique, and I just picked three colonies, so this is the subcloning reaction. This is the plasmid I was trying to clone it into, and this is the plasmid, the old plasmid. So when you don't add SIP, it's just always re-annealing, re-ligating uh, re into itself. When you do add SIP, you prevent this reaction from happening, and what you're recovering then is the successful subcloning that you want. Here's the big plasmid I was trying to subclone into. And here's my insert. So this is just the data, it's pretty impressive. So out of three out of three colonies where I used the SIP and the technique allowed me to subclone successfully 100% of the time. Without the SIP, it was 100% failure. So that's just a key technique in molecular biology. When you are trying to do subcloning, often adding SIP to your restriction digest uh, improves the efficiency of the ligation.